so guys i am a verified educator on an online learning platform called an academy right where i am making courses for gate examination both in hindi and english right so you can download the an academy learning app search my name over there act and follow me on that particular platform for awesome videos on the gate chemistry examination all right a very good morning to all of you so uh, the gate 2019 exam was kind of like a average paper it was not easy because there were a lot of nt type questions so the cutoff according to me would be around 27 or 28 marks at max right it cannot go i think beyond 28 uh, because there were a lot of nt type questions in physical chemistry and you know uh, there were a lot of calculations and as it is in general chemistry students are not very good with a lot of mathematics a lot of calculations so i feel the cutoff i am talking about the higher side it should not go more than 28 according to me all right now coming on to the, the general aptitude section on the other hand was quite easy so you know you can score about 3 or 4 marks in the general aptitude section so maybe it can go up to 29 but i don't think it can go beyond 29 right so that's the i think that's the highest point where it can go now coming on to the answer key uh, i have in total there were 65 questions in the exam and i have 35 questions with me right now from the chemistry section and i have already made a video for 10 questions from the aptitude section so in total i have 45 questions with me right now in case you remember some other question with the values right especially the physical chemistry questions if you remember with the values then i can help you uh, solve those questions as well or i can make the answer key for them as well all right now discussing about the questions i have divided the questions into three sections inorganic organic and physical so now talking about inorganic chemistry there were two questions from 18 electron rule right so for one of the questions the answer was answer was mnco5 br uh, it follows the 18 electron rule you can do the calculations right um, and then for the second question which was based on the tungsten uh, one was eta3 one was eta5 because again it will satisfy the 18 electron rule right this will be 3 plus 5 8 um plus 7 uh 50 sorry plus uh, 6 14 plus 4 18 right so it will follow the 18 electron rule now there was a lot of debate on this question that which of the allotropes of carbon is considered discrete now i don't remember in the question whether it was mentioned structurally discrete or in general discrete if you talk about in general then i have a good reference with me there was a uh, there's a um, you can say article published in the proceedings of national academy of sciences it's a very well reputed journal with an impact factor of around 9.7 so over there they have clearly mentioned that your fullerenes is a discrete molecule it is one of the purest forms of carbon and along with that it is also um uh, what do you call um it is soluble in aromatic solvents unlike other carbon atoms unlike other carbon allotropes right so fullerenes is definitely a discrete molecule and i have the reference as well so in case the gate uh, authorities decide that this is not the right answer we can also uh, you know put in a uh, what do you call a kind of you know we can uh, go against or we can challenge the answer key all right uh, then uh, about the carbonyl stretching frequencies for this particular structure ml2co3 there will be two stretching uh, two stretching frequencies right two different stretching frequencies again i have a reference for this as well um but it's not a very authentic reference but i feel the answer would be two right uh coming on to the icl3 question there were four statements given and you had to predict which is not the correct statement so i think that it, it does not have a tetrahedral structure it definitely conducts electricity in the liquid state right uh then it exists as a dimer it exists as i2cl6 and um, so definitely i think the answer is uh, that it does not have a tetrahedral structure right uh, then coming on to this question where we had been given the uh you know the splitting uh the split uh, the splitting of the d orbitals in a complex of nickel which was uh, in complex with your water molecule right so they had predicted that what will be the uh, stretching free uh, what will be the splitting for chlorine uh, right chlorine as a ligand and then uh, nh3 as a ligand so based on the spectrochemical series uh, nicl6 will show a lower splitting right and ni nh3 will ni nh3 complex will show a higher splitting all right Uh, then there was a question from bio in organic chemistry a very simple question which was based on the functions right so like the functions of the various uh, bio organic bio inorganic molecules or bio inorganic complexes so ferritin shows metal transfer uh, so, sorry not metal uh, yeah metal transfer uh, rubidoxin shows single electron transfer then cobalamin methyl transfer and carbonic anhydrase acid base you know catalysis so it, it was a very simple question now coming on to the organic part 
in the organic part we had a question based on o to sile i am sorry if the uh, you know structures are not clear i had to uh, you know squeeze squeeze down all the questions in this in this in this uh, particular board so we have oac all right uh, so ots is there and you have to predict that what will be the structure and i think uh, acetic acid was added if i'm not wrong so once the ots leaves the carbocation is generated and that carbocation kind of forms a, like a chelate with this double bond right so that's why the oac group attacks from the other side the other side from where the double bond is there so it will attack from the opposite side of the double bond uh, then talk, uh, there was a question based on uh, <coughs> uh gilman's reagent so there was Gil gilman's reagent given to us and there was an alpha beta unsaturated ketone so the gilman gilman's reagent shows one four addition and it will attack the methyl will attack over here right at the fourth position uh then we, they had they had given us phenyl selenium bromide so phenyl selenium bromide will be attached followed by oxidation with the help of hydrogen peroxide right so when you do the oxidation uh basically a double bond will uh, replace it basically your uh, phenyl selenium oxide bromide uh, phenyl selenium oxide will eliminate and you'll have a double bond over there so this will be the correct answer then there was a third question this is actually i worked on this particular scaffold right i have i have in fact used i've designed this molecule as well right like not the same molecule but something similar so this question had lithium aluminium hydride acetic anhydride and uh, there was this coupling reaction cc bond coupling reaction right in the presence of palladium so for that this is the correct answer all right it was it was quite simple uh, then we had i hope this is clear right this image is clear and uh, so double bond is over here on this side it was pretty simple and then we have nh uh, c triple bond end that will be reduced by lithium aluminum hydride followed by attack uh, followed by ad addition of acetic anhydride which will give us nh acetyl group okay uh, then there was a question based on uh, there was this um, uh, what do you call it? there was this alcohol given to us and then we were adding PCC which is oxidizing agent and then it's followed by zinc chloride zinc dichloride right uh, so over there over here what will happen is this product particular product will form this was to be done by Cram's rule uh, so this uh, this isopropyl group will go above the plane and this OH will be formed below the plane okay whereas the stereochemistry of the methyl will remain the same it was given below the plane so it will remain below the plane then there was a question on nmr that how many signals we will observe in the nmr spectroscopy so the answer for that was five signals uh, then there was a question based on chemical shift so there was a 400 megahertz instrument given to us and it was said that it resonates at 1560 hertz so i had always mentioned in all my videos on nmr spectroscopy that one ppm is equal to the frequency in hertz of frequency of the instrument but in hertz so if the frequency of instrument is 400 megahertz so then one ppm is 400 hertz so 1560 upon if you do upon 400 you will get equal to 3.9 ppm okay then there was a question based on epoxidation using per acid and for that if we have oh then the oh if which basically directs the group uh, to the same plane where it is present so the epoxide will be found above the plane and the OH will also be above the plane but if you replace this H by some particular um, R moiety right some 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 group I don't know which group was given to us in the question so in that case then the epoxide will be found below the plane due to steric uh, clashes okay then there was a question uh, where we had to predict I think ethyl lithium was added and we had to predict that the stereochemistry will be because of what which of the following um, models whether falcon and falcon model cramps model or cramps uh, chelation model so according to me the answer should be cramps chelation model okay uh, then there was a question i think i'm not very sure about this uh, but i just mentioned it uh, the enantiomeric excess um, that will come out to be 13 percent okay i'm not very sure about this um, then we had a question this is I think uh, based on reduction okay uh, we had added B2H6 so B2H6 will basically reduce your uh, carboxylic acid and uh, select chemo selectively right and uh, it is actually one of the uh, only reagents which can easily reduce the carboxylic acids lithium aluminium hydride can also do it but it's not a very efficient reagent so when you add the B2H6 um, it will reduce it to the alcohol and then I think um, uh, I am not sure what other uh, yeah, then we uh, do it do the hydrolysis or we add the acid because of which cyclization takes place and you get this kind of uh, lactone okay followed by again so this is a question which is number of i think um five is the answer for yeah this is a question based on diels reaction that how many of the 
a diene will show the Diels-Alder reaction. For that, the answer was five. Basically, you have a, you should have a cissoid conformation. All right. Uh, then there was a question based on pericyclic uh, Woodman Hoffman uh, rule question. For that, it was a six pi system, right? And if you do the if you do the proper uh, conceptual method, you will get photochemical chondrotatory. For six pi system, chondrotation is taking place, and that only takes place in case of photochemical light, right? Then uh, there was again a question on pericyclic, and there is a lot of debate about this question, right? Uh, I think it is a uh, it is a question uh, where the substrate was something like this, right? Um, I think this was the question and we had been given two groups over here. So the answer could be they could both be cis and they could both be trans. Okay. So the answer is both the products can be formed. Okay. I'm not sure. Yeah. Answers both the products can be formed. Okay. Uh, then there was a question on rearrangement reaction. A four membered uh, ring was given to us. Uh, in that question, many of you have done it incorrectly. Okay, there's a, another re a rearrangement that takes place. Firstly, a secondary carbocation is formed, then methyl shift takes place, and then a tertiary carbocation is generated. So both the methyl group and the chlorine get attached to the same particular carbon, right? So you have the methyl and chlorine attached to the same carbon, and you have a five-membered ring. So that is the correct answer for that. Uh, then there was a question that how many of the molecules are optically inactive? For that, the answer was three. Right, three molecules were optically inactive and then there was a question on Norrish type reaction uh, you know uh, tributyl tin hydride was given to us and AIBN so AIBN is basically a radical initiator and in that question a 10 member ring will be formed with no double bonds in between right there were two options where there were double bonds but no double bond will be formed in that particular example okay so these were the questions from organic that I remember as of now coming on to physical physical like I told you in my previous videos as well uh, some questions are specific to um, gait uh, that is your um, silicates, uh, silicates and your spinals and three questions came two from silicates one from spinal so for the spinal they had asked the normal spinal and the normal spinal is basically your ZNFE2O4 uh, talking about silic silicates so uh, your zirconium was zirconium SiO4 was basically your ortho silicate uh, your BIE or bare bare was basically your um, uh, cyclic silicate right and there was one pyrosilicate given to us which is your sheet silicate okay uh, followed by there was a question on friend uh, isotherm so for that you had to basically predict that when you'll get a straight line so you had to convert the friend isotherm equation into a y equal to mx plus c equation the straight line curve and if you convert it into a straight line curve you'll get it a, a, a graph between surface coverage natural law of surface coverage versus natural log of pressure okay and then number of EPR signals for methyl radical uh, I've discussed it many times in my EPR videos as well uh, the answer would be 4 and the ratio would be it will follow the Pascal triangle because the spin is equal to half right the spin is half integer so it will follow the Pascalian triangle and the ratio will be 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 uh, then there was a question <coughs> based on statistical thermodynamics again a repeat question from uh, kind of uh, kind of a repeat question from your CSI net exam the answer for that would be six right uh, there were three distinguishable particles uh, with the uh, energy equal to the total energy equal to 2e right and there were three energy levels 0 e and 2e it's very very similar to your CSI net exam uh, then there was a question on group theory According to me, when I did the calculations, the answer was coming out to be 11. Uh, but when, when I see the question, uh, the question was basically a D8, uh, you know, D8 character table. So if I look at the D8 character table, then the answer comes out to be 9. Right. I don't know. Maybe I had made some mistake during the calculations. So I feel the answer is 9. But when I did the calculations, the answer was coming out to be 11. Now, I don't know whether they had changed uh, some value in the character table because of which I was getting 11. But if I talk about if they had given us a D8 character table, then definitely the answer is 9. If they ha hadn't given the D8 character table or had they made some changes in the uh, character table, then maybe the answer could also be 11. OK then you have to predict the incorrect statement uh, for caf2 and cesium chloride so the incorrect statement is that both of them have a cubic closed pack structure okay uh, then there was a question based on silicone again you have to predict the incorrect statement so i think it was given that silicones are soluble in water which is totally incorrect silicones are insoluble in water right and that is a very potent application of silicones right they are used as metal coatings to avoid rusting of metals 
so definitely i think if this was a statement i don't remember the statements correctly but i think this was a statement that silicone is soluble in water which is totally incorrect uh, then there was a question uh, based on your um, there was a uh, there was a graph given for uh, i think there was a phase phase uh, phase transitions and for that you had to predict what is not possible so according to me at 210 kelvin when you increase the pressure uh, there is no chance that uh, it will turn into a liquid because at 210 kel 10 kelvin if you see the graph if you increase the pressure it will go into a solid state it will never go into the liquid state so according to me that should be the answer uh, then there was a question based on nuclear chemistry for which alpha emissions and beta emissions were taking place so there were seven alpha emissions and four beta emissions so the total answer would come out to be 11 and then there was a last question based on quantum uh, which even i could not figure out because uh, you have to predict the momentum and if i can and function was given to us now to predict the function uh, you should apply the momentum operator to get the momentum right but if you apply if you apply the momentum operator on that particular function you don't get the function back that means for the momentum operator the function sine kx plus e to the power i3 kx something like that is not an eigenfunction because you're not getting the function back because if you do the uh, do the differentiation of sine kx it will come out to be cos something right k cos kx so because of that you will not get the same function back right but they had not mentioned in the options not defined or that it is not eigenfunction the given function they had th there was no such option so then the only other answer that i could think about is 3ih cross right so i think either the answer should be 3ih ih cross or maybe i'm missing some important part it could be that as well so in case you know the answer to this question you can comment down below and let me know right so anyway i hope you found the video useful and there were a lot of repeat questions right there was a question from clausius clapeyron equation it, it is not a repeat question but the same similar very very similar kind of question was asked in your um tifr exam as well right so that's why i tell you even if you don't have to go to tifr it's good to you know fill in the form and give this exam give these exam um, give these exams you know it has a very um it kind of gives you a rough idea of how the question is going to be it helps you in your preparation right so always even if you don't have to go for that particular um uh, company or that particular institute you should always give entrance exams as much as possible it's a very good practice and a very good habit and that's why i also do the same and that's why i'm preaching you the same right it helps a lot so anyway i hope you found this video useful if you have any queries uh, please let me know down in the comment section and all these questions i've remembered because of you guys as you guys only all of you almost posted all these questions on the reagent blues facebook page so thank you so much for that and uh, uh, I'll see you in the next video if some of you post some more questions, right? <clears throat> and now we'll start the preparation for BARC as well. So all the very best. I'll soon be making videos about the BARC exam and also the IIT exam, right? Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.